as you've no doubt noticed, it's literally raining electric cars right now. Which one do you buy? Well, it can get quite confusing, but one of the best on the market, I think, might be the Skoda Enyaq IV. We've already done a preview of this car. We did a head-to-head -head against the Mustang Mach-E. And today, after living with this car for a few weeks, we thought we'd bring you a full and honest review of this by itself. Underneath, it's basically a VW ID4 or an Audi e-tron, but Skoda have done their own thing with the design. And that's where I wanna start with the design. Come with me. Just look at this interior. It's absolutely stunning. Skoda wanted this to look a bit like a high-end living room, so they offer a bunch of different themes. There's loft, lounge, lodge, suite, and this one, eco-suite. It's a 1,600 pound option, but I think it's worth every penny because look at this leather. It's cognac, cognac leather seats, cognac leather center console, cognac on the dashboard, you got glossy black down here, a little bit of chrome, and then this lovely detail on the vents. Plus the steering wheel has these delicious little chrome accents around the inside, and this lovely little volume knob, knob gang approves. Plus the whole thing is set off really nicely by this enormous display on the dashboard. To me, this is sensational. Look what I've done. I've started a review of a Skoda, not by talking about practicality or price, but by talking about design. This thing is good, not for a Skoda, it's good full stop. I'm gonna do something else you might not expect me to do this early in a Skoda review, and that is to talk about the way it drives. So many electric SUVs have horrible, horrible suspension. Tesla Model Y, Ford Mustang Mach-E, great cars, but with suspension that feels like they were designed for a Lamborghini. Personally, even though they're brilliant, I just couldn't bring myself to buy one of those because I don't hate my family. But the Enyaq, lovely. The suspension is so smooth. It just glides over the road in exactly the way you'd expect a family car to glide. I love driving this car. It's even got 21 inch alloy wheels. Big wheels normally ruin the ride, but in this thing, it just glides magnificently. I mean, I can't imagine what the 19 or 20 inch wheels would feel like. It probably feels like a bloody Rolls Royce. Ironically, Skoda will sell you sports suspension for your Enyaq, but trust me, don't do it because you'll end up ruining the ride. This is a family car. It's supposed to be comfortable and it is. The steering is nice and light. It's quiet in here. The stereo's lovely. I had to play with it earlier. It just sounds tremendous. It's everything you want from a family car. It's rear wheel drive, by the way, but that doesn't mean it's sporty, but equally, it doesn't embarrass itself when you go through a corner. For example, I've got a bit of a right-hander coming up, and watch this. What you find is that it's neat and tidy through the bends. This proves you don't need rock-hard suspension to have a car corner in an impressive way. Ooh, nearly killed a pigeon. So it's agile without being uncomfortable. And you know what? The brakes are actually quite decent as well, even though it uses drum brakes, old school drum brake technology on the rear axle. But it doesn't really matter because it's got an electric motor which also harvests energy and helps to slow you down. There are three levels of brake regen in this car. You pull the paddles behind the steering wheel and that contributes a little bit of braking force to the car. So you don't really need disc brakes all round. Skoda really has shied away from extreme performance with the Enyaq IV. There are two versions in the UK, the IV60 and IV80, and neither of them have the frightening acceleration you get in a Tesla. Both versions do 0 to 62 in around eight and a half seconds and have a top speed of around, who cares, not very much. Chances are though, if you buy this car, you're going to have your family on board. So keeping them comfortable is going to be the priority. Another thing that's really important is exterior design. And I think Skoda have done a pretty good job of that. Proportionally, it's the size and shape of a large SUV. Although, if you look at it from the side, it kind of resembles a minivan. But don't worry, because if you spend 1,100 pounds, you can get the optional 21 inch wheels. And that gives it a really lovely stance. I'm not a massive fan of the back of this car. It's quite plain. However, Skoda have just announced they're gonna do a coupe version of the Enyaq and that should sort out the back end. The front 
I absolutely adore. I love the creased lines on the bonnet, these air curtains down below, the aggressive front end. Plus you get two options for headlights, LED or these matrix beam LEDs. Now these are a 600 pound option, but they really do help out, especially in really dark environments where there aren't any street lamps. Plus they give you two extra features. Number one, you get these pop out washers, which keep the glass clean. And number two, they give you an animation on the back end when you indicate to make the car look that little bit more stylish. Plus, if you wanna make it even more stylish, get the crystal face. It's a 600 pound option, but it basically replaces this grill and gives you almost like a chandelier on the front of the car, which might be a little bit too bling for a lot of people, but believe me, it really, really sets this car off. As for practicality, the ENIAC lets itself down slightly by not having a front trunk. Lift the bonnet and all you'll find is a bunch of scary looking electrical cables. But it does have a bigger boot than most cars in its class, 585 litres. Around the back, there's good legroom and good headroom so the whole family can ride in comfort. There's also Isofix, separate climate control, USBs and a flip up tray with its own cup holder plus the option of headrests with bits that fold down on either side to keep your head in place when you fall asleep. The front we've already discussed for looks and it's worth saying that the practicality up here is good too. Good sized door bins, good sized center console. I would have preferred a larger instrument cluster for the Speedo. This one's confusingly small, but there is an optional head up display. On the subject of practical motoring, let me talk about range for a minute. In the UK, we have two options for the ENIAC, a 60 and an 80. The 60 has a 58 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will let you go 255 miles, while the 80 has a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will let you go 333 miles, in theory. But here's something that's interesting. The ENIAC has the option of a heat pump, which is a device that warms the battery pack to allow it to perform to its best possible potential. And I think those range figures were achieved with a car that was fitted with a heat pump, unless the tests were done somewhere warm. So what you gotta remember is that the heat pump is an optional extra. It costs a grand, which means if you want the best possible range, two tips for you get the iv80 and get yourself the heat pump if you do get the heat pump then apparently it can add around 30 percent to your range so it is well worth it what am i getting today well right now it's about eight and a half degrees in winter and i'm averaging around 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour which works out to be somewhere in the region of 155 miles with the 77 kilowatt hour battery pack However, I have managed well over three miles per kilowatt hour, even on the motorway. So in the real world, expect the ENIAC to achieve somewhere between 150, worst case, to around 250, best case. There's a couple of recharging options in the ENIAC. If you're charging at home on three pin, it'll take around 40 hours to refill. Please don't do this. Get yourself a wall box. A seven kilowatt box will recharge you in around 12 hours, which is fine for overnight charging. It will also work with an 11 kilowatt charger, which should let you top up the battery in eight hours. If you need a quicker splash on the move, the ENIAC can support up to 135 kilowatts DC rapid charging. Again, this is not the quickest by any stretch. Some other cars do charge faster, but given the lack of rapid chargers available today that can deliver more than 100 kilowatts of juice, it's just about enough. Expect to go from 26 miles of range remaining to just over 200 miles in around half an hour. Honestly, I really like the ENIAC IV. Yes, there's a million and one other electric SUVs on the market. Some of them even have way more trendier badges on the front, but you know what? This manages to stand out as being one of the best, if not the best in its category. So it's good, I like this car. But in the interest of balance, let me give you a list of things I don't like. That infotainment system, it looks great with a nice big screen, but in my experience, it can be quite buggy and annoying. Some of the build quality is a little questionable. The wobbly volume knob on the steering wheel and the rear seat trays being prime examples. The panoramic glass roof is not very panoramic at all. It's tiny in comparison to what you'll find on many of its rivals. It's expensive. The fast charging capability I mentioned earlier, that costs extra. The heat pump, the wheels, anything desirable costs more. And finally, there's no front trunk. I've said it before, but where's my front trunk? Is it even a proper electric car if it doesn't have a front trunk? I don't know. 
It's not cheap, and yes, I do appreciate the fact that £43,000 for this particular example is going to be a tough pill to swallow, especially for a Skoda. But if you can afford it, trust me, what you're getting is an absolutely phenomenal all-round family SUV.